Um, so my name's Cayman. I'm the International Officer for Southeast Asia and East Asia at the University of Hertfordshire. So today we'll be talking about, sorry. Right. So today we'll be talking about how to make an application to the University of Hertfordshire. What we'll be covering today is choosing your course, the entry requirements, I will take you through the application process, useful contacts. So the first step towards making an application is choosing your course. So at the University of Hertfordshire, we have nine schools of studies. So they range from the business school to creative arts, engineering and computer science to humanities, life and medical science, and so on. We have over 300 different courses available to you. Um, so some of the popular ones that you might be interested in studying is the undergraduate and postgraduate courses. Um, the ones that you might be interested in is studying an undergraduate course or a postgraduate course. So with the undergraduate course, they're typically three or four years long. With the four year ones, they're the sandwich course, which, which gives you an option of doing a, either a year abroad or a work placement. Again, with a postgraduate, they're available for one or two years. With the two years option, there is a sandwich option as well. So you get to do a work placement. So you do one year of study and then one year work placement. So when you're researching your course, you can go on our website. If you know the course that you want to study, you can type it into the search bar and it'll bring up some options. If you're unsure you want to see our list, if you click on our courses, it will load through to the next page where it can show you the different options. So here you'll see the options available are undergraduate and postgraduate. There are foundation degrees and online distance learning, but if you click on them, they'll bring up a full list. Um, that's only if you're unsure of what you want to study. But if you know roughly what school studies you want to um, study, then you can go onto our menu page, click on study, and you can search by the schools of study. Again, if you click on those links, it'll bring up more information about the school and you'll be able to search your course from there. Once you've searched your course, make sure you read the information that's available to you. So do look at the key information so you know how long the course is and then read about the course. This can help you with your personal statement. In your personal statement, you need to explain to us why you want to study this course. So you need to do as much reading as possible to find out why you want to um, study with us. And also look at the modules that are available in year one, year two and year three. So you're sure. So you, you know about the structure of the course. Also, make sure you, you read about what career options are available to you. Part of your personal statement, you do need to answer your career aspirations and how this course fits in with your career goals. So be sure to read up on all the information that's avail available to you on the work page as well. There's also course fact sheets that you can download and the program specs. So the program specifications, if you download that, that will show you um, the course breakdown, whether the module is more coursework based or exam based. That will be all in the program spec down at the bottom. So after you researched about the course, you want to do a bit of research about the university. Um, Obviously, with studying abroad, you're going to be spending a lot of money. So you need to make sure you've done enough research to show why you want to study at the University of Hertfordshire. So be sure to look around the website, make sure you know where we're located, any um, where we're located. You research on our facilities, our teaching, what's different about our courses compared to another university. Um, make sure you read all that up on um, when you're doing your research. After you've done the research, you want to look at the entry requirements. So if you go back to the course page, there is a section for entry requirements. With the entry requirements on the page, they are more specific to UCAS points. Um, students can apply for UCAS and when you do apply for UCAS, there are points which are calculated um, and that will be based on the entry requirements. But most of you will have international um, qualifications. So with the international qualifications, you want to go back to your country page. Um, so as that link showed, if you click on entry requirements and then international entry requirements, it will bring you to this page. This will show you the pre-sessional English academic requirements. So the academic requirements, it will list down the A-levels and the IB. Um, this might not be something that you have. 
So if you don't have this, go to our country web pages. This will load up the different regions that we have. And so once this loads, it'll show you the different regions that we've broken it down into. If you just select your region, it will then load up your countries. So I'm going to use Southeast Asia as an example here. So once I click into Southeast Asia, it will then bring up the breakdown by country. Now, if your country is there, select your country. If your country is not there, then don't be afraid. You can email us and then we can let you know your entry requirements. I'll give you the contact details towards the end of this presentation. But if, for example, if your country is there, you click on your country and there'll be an entry requirements section and it'll show you what you need for a year one entry or if you're looking for direct entry into year two or year three, it will let you know what you'll need for that as well. So for English requirements, majority of our undergraduate courses requires an IELTS 6 with no less than 5.5. For the postgraduate, we normally require IELTS 6.5 with no less than 5.5. There is an asterisk against them because there are some courses that require a different IELTS. So for example, um, our mass communication programs for our undergraduate requires an IELTS 6.5. Uh, and then some of our postgraduates, there are some courses that require higher IELTS. Um, but if you go back to what I showed you before, if you go back to the course page and go on to the entry requirements, all of them will list down the English requirement that you need. If you don't have IELTS, then we do accept other English tests. So some of the examples are listed here. So we do take GCSE English, we do take in Cambridge English qualification or Pearson's or the TOEFL as well. And there are the list there are more that we accept and the list is on our website if you do find that the english test that you have taken is not on the website and you want to check with us again just email us and we'll let you know as well so, so we do offer pre-sessional english as well so at the moment because of the coronavirus we have amended this to online teaching so we'll be delivering our pre-sessional English online for September 2020 and January 2021 intake. So we normally offer three different routes so we've got a standard route, a higher route and an advanced route. So depending on what your course requires um, we'll give you the route that you need so for example if you need an IELTS 6 then we'll give you a standard route. The score you'll need for a standard route is at least an, an IELTS of 5 or 5.5 and then for the higher and the advanced route it's listed there. Um, at the moment for our online programs we're only offering 12 or 6 weeks. There will be more information on our website and the link is there. So once you've done your research, you found the course that you want to study and you've looked at the entry requirements, you will need to start making your application. So you can apply for you can make your application through our website. If you go to the international section of our website and click new student and apply now, that will bring up our application form. The application form is very straightforward. Um, one of the requirements that we do request is that you use your own personal email address. If you are using one of our authorised agents to apply to the university, please do make sure that you use your personal email and not the agent's email. This is because we need to send you um, communications when you join the university, so it's important that we have your personal email address. Application deadline is roughly August for September intake. With the online application form, we don't require any application fees. And for standard offers, we look around um, a three working day turnaround. Um, but this is very, well, this is dependent on the, on the period that you apply for. So if you apply during the peak period, then it can take more than three working days, but we do aim to give you a response um, in three days. Um, standard offers are the offers where um, we can make a decision straight away. Um, offers such as creative arts where it needs to go to the tutor, they can take more than three days because the tutor does need to review your application. The offer that we do issue is either a conditional offer or academically, academically unconditional offer. A conditional offer just means you have some outstanding documents that you need to send in to meet the conditions. 
And then the academically unconditional offer means you have met all the conditions and there is no condition, uh, no more outstanding conditions for you to meet. Once you've made your application and you submitted your documents and you received your offer, to confirm your offer, you need to pay a £5,000 deposit. The £5,000 deposit can be paid um, through bank transfer or you can use Western Union. There are a lot of different methods that you can use to pay your deposit. All the information will be on in your offer letter or it'll be available on our website. You are required your eight digit student ID to pay your deposit. Without your eight digit student ID, it's harder for us to locate your payment. So make sure in your payment reference, you, you put down your eight student digit ID number so our finance team can allocate your payment. Once you've confirmed your offer, if you still have any outstanding documents, make sure you send it to admissions as soon as possible. Once we received your documents, we would then update your offer to academically unconditional when all the conditions are met. So the supporting documents that you need when you're making an application are listed here. So we normally request a copy of your official academic certificates and transcript. If you're making an application and you don't have these documents, then you don't need to worry. You can send them later on when you do receive them. We also need evidence of your English language qualification. Again, if you haven't taken an English test, then not to worry. You can still submit an application and send those documents in later. One of the most important documents that we do need when you're making an application is a personal statement. So your personal statement should cover the following four reasons. Why you want to study the course, why you want to study at University of Hertfordshire, why you want to study in the UK and your career aspirations and how the, the course fits in with this. As long as you cover all four sections, your personal statement will be fine. Um, and then we also need a signed and dated academic reference presented on header paper. If you do have a gap in studies where you maybe graduated a couple years ago and you started working and you can't get an academic reference, then we, you can send us in a work reference from your employer. Again, it has to be signed and dated and presented on header paper. And then we just need a copy of your passport as well. Um, the other information that we do require for some applications, so not all applications require this. So if you're applying for a creative art course, we require a portfolio. If you studied in the UK before, we require copies of your previous CAS, visa and BRP. If, you've, if you're applying for the same level of study, so if you studied in the UK before and you're applying for the same level of study, we require a justification statement. So the justification statement needs to explain why you want to undertake the same level of study again. And then some courses do require work experience. Where it requires work experience, we'll either request a copy of your CV or we'll send an additional information request form to you um, to complete. Um, if you don't send any of these documents in when we request it, it can delay your application process. So if you want to you know, get a head start, if you know you're applying for a creative art course, do make sure you submit a portfolio because without your portfolio, we can't send it to the tutor to review and that would delay your application process. So once you've submitted an application through our online website, you'll get a confirmation email. The confirmation email will contain your five digit application ID number. You should use this ID number every time you send an email to us and you want an update on your application. The five digit ID number will help us locate your record and it will speed up the process as well. Once you've received your confirmation email, our admissions team will review your off, uh, will, will review your application. If it's a standard application, you'll receive an offer for, uh, through email. If you have submitted all your supporting documents, for example, your personal statement, and academic reference, we will then issue you a formal offer letter. And this formal offer letter will contain your eight digit student ID number and it'll be in a PDF format. Again, like I mentioned before, please do use your eight digit student ID number as your reference for your deposit payment. Um, so we are able to locate it and it doesn't go missing. When you're submitting any outstanding documents, there are two different ways you can do it. The quickest way is to go on our website and submit it through our document upload form. Um, the link is there, but again, if you just go to the menu page, if you go to international and then click on 
uh, document upload, you'll be able to upload your document there. Otherwise, you can also email us your documents with your application ID or your student ID to international at hearts.ac.uk. And that's the application process. So some of the useful contacts. So if you have any general inquiries or any admissions inquiries that you need, you can email international at hearts.ac.uk. I've also listed the different contacts that you can um, get hold of. So Christina manages our UK internationals, our EU and American students. James is the regional manager for South Asia. Um, Bradley Johnson is the regional manager for Middle East and Africa and Tom is the international officer. And then for Southeast Asia and East Asia, I look after it um, along with my colleague Gavin as well, who's the deputy head of international. In each country, we do have country offices as well. So um, if you're located in any of these countries, we do have in-country support. So in India, we have an office uh, in Malaysia, Thailand, Indonesia, Nigeria, East Africa. So we do have a wide range of different country offices um, who are available to help you as well. So if you do have any questions, you can also contact them. And if you don't have a country office, then not to worry, we do have authorised representative. So we do have local representatives in your country. They would have detailed information about the university and they can give you assistance throughout the application process. Um, you can find our authorised representative in your country on our country pages as well. <laughs>